about chaos and if you can find beauty in chaos and I can stand confidently today as a 34 year old man in front of you and say that yes I believe there is beauty in chaos but this wasn't always the case for me um, when I think back to my younger years and um, I'm a very genuine person never force what I believe upon anybody else but uh, my story is basically one of family friends faith and music and I was uh, fortunate to grow up in Middletown, New Jersey, had a really loving family, very close to my siblings, uh, and my mother, who was my hero, was always inspiring me to follow my dreams. And from the time I was five years old, I've always told people that I felt like I was going to be a musician when I grew up. And my mom was the one that actually afforded me piano lessons all the way through high school. And when I was a teenager, I first heard God Only Knows by the Beach Boys and listened to the entire Pet Sounds album, which was just such a spiritual experience. And I fell in love with Brian Wilson and his music and decided I wanted to be a songwriter. So when I was 19 years old, I had an opportunity to move to Southern California. And I thought, this is great because this is where Brian Wilson created all this great Beach Boys music. So I took that opportunity and I was excited because I was going to be studying at Loyola Marymount University in Los Angeles, and I was gonna be starting my, my music career. That is when chaos started to creep into my life for the first time, um, because it was the first time I had dealt with depression. Um, began with loneliness and isolation, just being so far from home. Um, it got worse because I have a very unloving uh, father who was very verbally and emotionally abusive to me and the rest of my family as well. Um, and he was caught up in cheating and lying and stealing, which are just things that I don't believe in at all. I'm very anti all that, actually, as you get to know me. But uh, I was pretty messed up as I was trying to gather the strength to finish school. I ended up moving back to the New Jersey shore, and I kind of opened up to my great friend Pete Andrews, who uh, I record with, and it kind of broke down in front of him and told him about all these songs I was writing out in California, and he gave me the opportunity to start working on my second record, which is called Live, Laugh, Love. I didn't get the title till later on uh, because my life continued to spiral in a very, very negative way and felt like no matter what I did, there was just an emptiness that I, I couldn't get rid of. It was the morning of August 25th, 2010. I'll never forget it, even though it's ir ironic that I could say I can never forget it because I don't remember it. And it was my mom that actually found me in our kitchen talking, not making any sense. And had it not been for my mom, I wouldn't be here today because I was not in a position to get myself the help that I needed. As it turned out, I was suffering from undiagnosed type 1 diabetes. And for those of you unfamiliar with the disease, a normal blood sugar ranges from 85 to 100. By the time the ambulance took me to the hospital, my blood sugar was over 1,400. And um, the doctors had never seen anything like that before. Um, my heart actually stopped for a whole 120 seconds. And I was placed into a medically induced coma. And for the first four days, my mom and my brother and my sister had the burden of not knowing whether I was going to live or not. Fortunately, I did wake up six days later. And the first thing I wanted to do was listen to a Beach Boys song because I felt like I was so close to not wanting to live anymore that one of the things that always gave me such great joy was my passion for music. And I listened to a song called When a Man Needs a Woman, which is a very obscure Beach Boys song, but it highlights Brian Wilson's falsetto beautiful voice, which is a style that I've tried to imitate in my own music career too. And that put me in a better frame of mind. It was very hard because I could not stop crying the whole time that I was in the hospital. And I was intubated so long that I had lost my voice, but I started to get an idea for a song. And the song eventually would turn out to be the title track to my second record, a song called Go Ahead, Live, Laugh, Love. And I got the earliest ideas for the melody 
while I was still in the hospital, and it was a long road back, but I finally got myself healthy, and life actually got a whole lot better after going through something so, so awful. So that's how I feel uh, chaos can be a beautiful thing, and I really feel like now I'm in a place where I'm able to use music and my story to help other people, which is really my, that's been my personal vow ever since going through that. And uh, I actually, I don't believe in coincidences at all. And I actually, my regular day job is I work at Jersey Shore Hospital and I play music in pediatrics. So I get to sing for kids that are in similar situations that I went through as a young adult. So I feel like a real honor and it's a real honor and real privilege. Thank you. <laughs> it's a real honor and privilege to, to be there for, for those patients and their families. And I get to play music. So I get to use the musical gifts that I've been given and kind of just live my, my life out as the gospel, doing good work every day. So I'm very, very fortunate for that. And I've somehow found a way to use my chronic illnesses to not make me become bitter, but become better. And I feel like I've become a better person as a result of that. And i um, very fortunate this morning to have my bandmates, Pete Stern, Will Blakey, and Brian Hansen with me. And we're going to perform for you all this morning the title track to my 2013 record, Go Ahead, Live, Laugh, Love. Thanks so much. Yeah. 
Thank you Good very luck, much. everyone. Thanks so much.